the new rich is peace. You can put somebody in the Rolls Royce, he's still gonna have the same problems. And I think once you become this place where you just at peace with who you are and who you become, I had to give myself permission to evolve because it was almost like I wanted to grow, but I couldn't grow because of my surroundings. Joe, is this my last marriage? <laughs> Okay, on your palm. Yes. You have a the second one. You have a second one. That's right now. Okay. Oh, right now, second this one? This is my second one. Okay. Do you see another one? I hope she doesn't have second one, third one. Joe, this is a very important question. <laughs> okay. Please say something. All right, so you guys know I could give two shits about celebrity news, celebrity gossip, celebrity divorces, but I think this is actually worth a conversation. So as you know, Young Jeezy, the Atlanta rapper, recently filed for divorce from his Vietnamese wife, Jeannie Mai, who's also one of the hosts on The Real. First of all, I forgot that they were married. It's not relevant news to me. Celebrities are good models for romance and the highs and the highlights, but I don't think they are good models for relationships. And it, it, it saddens me that a lot of our women in particular have drank the Kool-Aid of this is what love is supposed to be like, right? Following these millionaires who typically made their name and made their fame by being either social pariahs or professional critics. And in this case, you have both. He's dropped a young and a hot new album, Church in These Streets. You guys know who I'm talking about. Give it up for Jesus! I'm a big fan, big fan. And what strikes me first, you know, sometimes we talk about black men's Peter Pan syndrome, and I like to put it in a larger white supremacist context. White supremacy likes to keep us in a boy role. It likes to keep us infants, socially, politically, intellectually, emotionally. And I think that's part of the reason why you see a lot of these rappers go by little this, baby that, and young this. Young Jeezy is a perfect example. You know, he was known as the snowman. He rapped about being a prolific drug dealer and he promoted and made his wealth primarily from promoting that lifestyle to the youth. Seems like now he has changed his life. He's trying to model a different lifestyle, but those are his roots. And I'm not upset at the brother because I understand in a white supremacist context coming from certain environments, sometimes that is your only option, athletics, crime. Um, and unfortunately, this is what we know this brother for. And I bring that up because unfortunately, it's very difficult with that context for the rest of the world, our women, other people's women, to treat us or to consider us on equal footing from a maturity standpoint. Uh, typically, they would like to keep us in within a concept that they're familiar with the gangster, the mandingo, the athlete. But if you're trying to be the man, I don't know if the rest of the world knows what that is or wants what that is. Yeah. He likes white women, blonde hair, blue eyes. And you like I black like, rappers. I like, I like the good brother, I do, I think yeah. they're cute. Yeah. Okay. So when I said on this show that I like, I, oh. somebody said white meat somewhere yes. and I was like, yes. yeah, I like white meat, but I like my dark meat, meat on, on the, the side. side. Yeah, you right? remember that. <laughs> Jeannie Mai, she's one of the hosts on The Real. She um, has made a name for herself, you know, in the celebrity space. I don't know what she did before that, but um, she struck me kind of like the white women we see enamored with black men. She strikes me as another woman who has a certain idea of black men. And it's not a human idea. It's an entertaining idea. Again, it's the... According to Dr. Tia San Johnson, we're walking fallacies. You know, we exist for their entertainment, their consumption. Well, we're not actually men. And it breaks my heart, particularly when you think about the SYSBM movement or the Passport Bro movement. It breaks my heart that 
we as black men, we think that there is some escaping that. Right? We think that just because this white woman or this Asian woman has sex with black men or she is married to a black man or she has mixed children, that she doesn't also harbor some white supremacist, some racist ideology. And I think it speaks to our misunderstanding of what racism is. I think a lot of times we focus on the interpersonal aspects of it. We don't consider the covert aspects of it. We don't consider how it's literally baked in to the world's conception of whiteness, blackness, Asianness, Hispanicness. And we assume that as black men, just because we get ourselves a woman who is non-black, that we can escape that reality. <laughs> I was watching a documentary the other day of Miles Davis. And uh, at one point he went to France for the first time. And similar to a lot of um, men, you know, in the 50s, 60s, even earlier than that, it, it wasn't until they went overseas that they didn't have to be black, right? James Baldwin talks about this as well. It wasn't until he went to Europe that he was considered an intellectual, not just a black intellectual. He was considered a man, not just a black man. And it's very easy, especially if you are born and bred in, a, in an American white supremacist context, it's very easy to fall in love with that. You know, Miles Davis, he talks about a French woman that he met while he was in France. And one of their friends asked, why aren't you gonna marry her? He said, because I love her. <laughs> It, it was interesting, but I think it speaks to our deep desires, Black people, to escape our condition. And unfortunately, our condition is that much more apparent when we're around each other. And I think that's why you see SYSBM, you see the Divest Movement, and you see other movements that champion the separation of Blackness, right, instead of the reconciliation of blackness, the repairing of blackness, especially in an American context. And in a lot of ways, this is true for African men as well. <laughs> you know, I'm Nigerian. One of the things that bothers me is you see a lot of Nigerian brothers who come over here and they marry the first obese white woman that they could find, right? And it's for multiple reasons. Number one, to get our papers. <laughs> but number two, I think also when you're coming from dealing with black women who tend to be abrasive across the board, I'm talking about African black women as well. And then you're encountered with a more docile, more meek white woman. It's very easy to get carried away and, uh, you know, fall for that, unfortunately. And I think it's worth conversation. So in this case, this is uh, Jeezy's first marriage, even though he has four children. <laughs> and this is Jeannie's second marriage. I would have the question for Jeezy, why was he inspired to marry this Asian lady after all the women that he had been with? In Jeannie's case, she was married before to a white gentleman. And one of the sticking points that led to their separation and uh, divorce, she didn't want kids. Her former husband wanted kids. I would probably assume that she was also uh, more urban than he was. She, she wanted to be outside. She wanted to have an enjoyable life. And white men don't necessarily represent enjoyment the way black men do. They represent safety and stability and power, right? So kind of like Jeannie said, it's good to have a white man with some black on the side. Fellas, car facts matter. And I think we're not asking the right questions, right? Like we, we, we tend to ask things like body count. And I think it's a, it's a good indicator, but it's not a good question because most women are gonna lie right there. Wait, what J. Cole say? She says she only fucked about four or five niggas, so you know you got to multiply by three. It's not a good question. Most women are going to lie. What you want to pay attention to and ask about is her integrity. What you want to find out is her ability to be bored. <laughs>
women who do not know how to be bored tend to be promiscuous sexually as well, right? She's going to fall in love with you very quickly because you're exciting and you're fun and you can buy her stuff and this is novel and it's new. But when that novelty wears off, she's going to be on to the next one. And a red flag for Jeezy should have been how she treated and talked about her first husband. And who knows how their marriage actually was, but the way that this woman consistently talked about liking black men on national television, even though he's not black. Some of her behavior, some of the ways that she condescendingly talked about him and their relationship, that should tell you that eventually that would be you. Because the reality is, brother, every woman is not cut out for marriage, even some of the ones who are married. And if you're somebody interested in sustainability, look at her track record, look at her environment, Look at her preferences. But I think the biggest one is, does she know how to be bored? And part of the reason why celebrity women are typically not good partners is because they typically don't know how to be bored. That's how, why they're celebrities. Same reason why celebrity men are typically not good partners. When your life is built on highs, you don't know how to deal with lows. You don't know how to deal with mundane Mondays. And as a community in particular, if we continue, because we have such a vacuum of healthy relationships to turn to, if we continue to look at these manufactured plastic celebrity relationships as goals, we'll continue to fail the same way that they do. I see now that Tiana Taylor and uh, Iman Shumpert, their relationship is rocky as well. Celebrity relationships are not a good model. So ladies, stop giving a shit about them. But brothers, more than anything, just learn about the dynamics and why they don't work. And learn that being the best tap dancer for a woman is not the way to keep her. Because it doesn't matter if you're Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're Russell Wilson. It doesn't matter if you're Steve Harvey. Uh, if a woman doesn't want to be kept, there's nothing you can do about it. So find a woman who does. Preferably find a woman who is a reflection of you, not just somebody who's good at performing the facade of a good woman and the pageantry of submission, rather than a woman who actually deeply respects values and honors you, not respects values and honors what you do for her. You dated black guys. Loved black guys. Yeah. 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 I did. I did. But for me, dark meat on the side, white keeps me mean and lean. You know, that's why I, I married white man. That's what I like. Hold up. What do you mean, dark I, meat on the side? Because she likes white offensive. I am no, going I'm not. Much. I'm saying, like, I like, I really do think black men are attractive. I do. Like, that's my. And I think it further speaks to some of that baked in covert um, racism. That's not, oh, I don't like black people, but it's more so I don't see black people as anything other than entertainment, anything other than enjoyment. I don't see black people as intellects. I don't see black people as philosophers. I don't see black people as visionaries. I see black people as a good time. And unfortunately, a lot of brothers forget that. <laughs> we forget that that's true for white women. We forget that that's true for Asian women. And we fail to notice that you don't talk like this to your fellow white friends. You don't talk like this to your fellow Asian friends. But whenever you're talking to me, you feel like you have to urbanize your accent, your delivery. You feel like now you have to neck roll. Now you have to finger wag. And again, I think it speaks to how deep and how baked in this prejudice is, there is no absolution to be found in the arms of a white woman, brothers. There's no absolution, especially to be found in the arms of an Asian woman. You know, I think statistically, Asian women are the most likely to date out. I think they mostly go to white men. <laughs> but I think it's, it's, number one, it's because I would say Asian women globally are the most sought out because they represent meek and docile uh, because of their culture, right? There's a lot of uh, deference 
in Asian femininity, which I, I do think our women could learn from. However, the idea that Asian women are just pushovers, it's, it's not true. I was watching a clip of Lita Turney and he talked about how in his years of working as a divorce attorney, two of the most dangerous people that he's either represented or been up against in divorce hearings were white women and Asian women. And unfortunately, you know, as brothers, we tend to think about danger as like overt danger, like what it looked like. Nah, sometimes you have to pay attention to what it is. And some of the most dangerous people are meek. And that's particularly what makes them dangerous because they're unassuming. So for brothers who think, I'm going to give me an Asian woman, I'm going to give me a white woman, I would just beg you to question your decision making and uh, make sure that you're not doing that only because you think they're easier to dot, 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 because you might end up losing in the long run. And what's interesting, you know, statistically, 80 percent of divorces are filed by women. And I don't actually think that's because it's because women are always initiating divorce. I think it's because male nature tends to be very honor driven and we tend to be very I made this decision, I'm going to stick to it. But I do think there's a large number of men who check out. And they check out and wait until the woman initiates the legal process. I know I've done that in relationships. <laughs> I no longer wanted to be with her, but to save her feelings, I'm going to make her think that she broke up with me. It happens. But in this scenario, the, the fact that this man filed... It tells me that either she did something monumental or she's just that unbearable. Because that typically doesn't happen. Men will just grit our teeth for the most part. And, you know, I don't want to speculate because I'm not a celebrity blogger or gossiper, but I, I'd, be, I'd be curious, you know. One of the things, you know, they had when they got married is a prenup. I think it's a good idea, especially people of a certain social economic status when you're getting married. But I guess my question to Jeezy would be similar to my question to, you know, a rapper like Eve. You sold this brand of gangster to our community. And then once you evolved, the most important financial decision you'll make in life, which is marriage, you made that with another community. And I've said it, I don't think you can be thoroughly pro-black and sleep and especially marry white. I think you could sleep white or Asian, but who you marry is more so social political decision than anything else. And when I see some of these brothers, some of these brothers who claim to be about the community, claim to be about the people, choose other communities and other people, it gives me reason to pause. I don't know what happened with their marriage. I think celebrity relationships are a joke altogether because they're not sustainable, just based on the, the personality types of celebrities, based on the flamboyant uh, aspects of their relationship. Imagine if everything you've been doing has been on TV and has been on tabloids and magazines. Regular days are going to feel unbearable because it's not that same level of high. So I again, I, I don't think marriage is for everybody. <laughs> Moving into the future, I don't know if marriage in the way that we have known it since time of memoriam is going to remain the same. Because I don't think the things that lead people to want to get married are the things that are going to sustain marriage. You know, with Jeannie Ma, she didn't want, have, want to have kids coming in. But I guess the, the black penis changed her mind. <laughs> and like I've always said, the best argument you can make for marriage is children. How do things change as we go into the future and less and less women actually want those responsibilities? Less and less men require that. Some men don't want to have kids now. Maybe now we just do long-term relationships until we decide to go our, our separate ways. Maybe now marriages are, are contracts that have expiration dates, especially for flamboyant people like celebrities. Like now there's a two-year-old little girl who is uh, 
going to have to be flown from Atlanta to L.A. every other week, every other month, maybe, just because of the whims of her parents. And she didn't ask to be here. But she's going to have to go through that and become whatever type of adult that those experiences are going to lend her to become. But black men, saving yourself is not the answer. Going to solicit other men's women is not the answer. Because whether you like it or not, you're not their first choice. You're their second. And the reason you're their second aren't good things. It's because you're accommodating. It's because you're fun. It's because you're entertaining. It's because you have sex good and you can dance. But it's not because you're a man. And our focus should be making sure the world sees us as men, not celebrating us for being black men and everything that means to them.